All right, so one of the first videos that I wanted to take a peek at here. Trump wins. Why the Democrats lost so badly. This looked like it was an interesting video. This is by someone named Margaret. I don't know the, how to pronounce the last name. Margaret Q. If I'm mispronouncing that, that's, that's my bad. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. I wanted to take a peek at this. Why they failed. Let's talk about Trump winning the 2024 presidential election. <laughs> Not only did conservatives win the electoral college, they also won the How is it acceptable to behave this way? House and all the swing states. It's easy to say, wow, over half of America consists of racist, sexist, white supremacists who support Hitler. But that unfortunately And then they wonder why they lost. Dude, they're going to this is going to be some time before they can dig themselves out of this, and I don't think they've learned their lesson. Would not be the correct conclusion to draw from this situation. You're racist. You're a fascist. You're a Nazi. You hate America. You hate women. You hate democracy. I'm sorry for your mom. Do not waste your <laughs> breath on these people. Anytime that you're talking to a Donald Trump supporter, just call him a Nazi. Call him a fascist. Keep it moving. These people are beyond the right of it. Dude, the irony. The fact that this dude is sitting here trying to lecture you on all of this shit and give you all these labels, yet it goes right over their head as to why they lost. And they're so sour for it. You have nothing to say. You've got zero to add to the conversation. There's no discussion. There's no debate. There's no points. There ain't no nothing, man. Skinny little boy. Yeah, dude, his, his, his points are uh, equal to his muscle mass. There's just nothing there, man. Education. And I'm only showing how racist this country is. Misogynistic. Y'all... Y'all hate to see a black, a Latino, anybody that's an LGBTQ plus, a woman being happy. The fact that anybody in good conscience could go to the polls and vote for a man that is a racist, that is oh a gosh. that is a misogynist, that is a racist who attempts Just stop. to overthrow our U.S. Hey, no. government and our democratic hey, I'm going to talk to you a little bit later on today. Has not been seen Thank you, in Del. our entire country's history is beyond me and it's just genuinely incomprehensible genuinely cannot comprehend this so in today chat let me let me guys at, let me ask you guys a question is it like it's okay no matter what these freakouts they're always funny because we're just laughing right but if you actually want to get a little bit more serious about it is it me or does it seem like every single one of them is a copy paste they all have they don't have talking points really all they have is the same labels once you get to them same labels, it's the same shit over and over and over again. And it's like, if this is all you've got, who the hell wants to be on your side? They're insufferable people to be around. In this video, let's talk about an issue that I noticed a lot of Democrats seem to be confused about, which is how in the world half of America could have voted for the reincarnation of Hitler. So the truth is actually quite simple. The people have fundamental needs He's that are unfortunately Hitler. not being met. Let me explain. There is a hierarchy of needs that needs to be met, also called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yep. You have to meet the basic needs first before you can satisfy the higher levels. A priority of needs, yeah. Here, from most fundamental to least fundamental. On the bottom, we have physiological needs, then we have safety and security, love and belonging, self-esteem, and then self actualized Yeah, so the psychological needs, you, it, it's... Or um, the physiological needs. You've got breathing, food, water, shelter, clothing. Like these are the essentials to actually survive. Everything else is going to be coming after that. You can't skip a step. You have to satisfy the lower you gotta levels climb before the ladder. you satisfy the higher levels. People need to have their physiological needs met before they can focus on what gender is my goldfish? What gender is my friend? Is my <laughs> friend a he, him, she, her, they, them, it? So the real question is, are these fundamental needs being met? The answer is absolutely not. No, of course not. We've already seen that was a bad pause. <laughs> um, we've already, that's, this is exactly what I was saying. A couple of days ago when I'm talking about what do people really care about? They care about the fact that they can pay their bills, buy their groceries, and all of that is just going down into the shitter. Everything is going up and your pay ain't increasing. Like your pay is the only thing that ain't increasing. You go to the grocery stores and you'll see things that like double to triple in price. And you're like, what? Uh, you know, I only put like a couple of things in the cart and this is adding up to a hundred bucks already. Yet your pay ain't increasing. 
Those are issues that people care about because it affects you every single day. This idea that you're going to be lectured about, you know, this gender and all this other stupid shit. And it's like nobody cares about this stuff. Nobody. I've never met anybody that cares about this except for a couple of loonies online. Never IRL. And Kamala and the Democrats completely ignored this, and that was their death. That was like a jump scare, man. You have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years. Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Oh, the my God. That I think a lot of celebrities, news anchors, coastal people, people who then don't why, really support why vote for others, you? people who are really sheltered, don't understand is that 60 to 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, that's huge. of America is on food stamps. These people don't understand because they can't relate. I'm so glad you guys got your cheap ass groceries and your cheap ass fuck ass because you're broke as shit. You're fuck bro. You're fuck bro. Oh my gosh, the banshees. To deny the fact that most people can't afford anything was reflected in the election results. Take a look at this guy. If you are so sad about your groceries being expensive, get a better fucking paying job. Do better in life. Get a fucking vacation. Do something. You and you think that this attitude is going to get you votes or win people to your side? It's like people are already struggling out there, but it goes to show, you know, the, the, the party that claims to be so heart filled and love is love. And, you know, let's all get to let's all get together and hold hands and shit are the ones who are going to lecture you all the time. They have no advice. They have nothing to offer but lecture lecturing. That's it. You're fucking stupid. And I hope you go jump off of a fucking bridge. We just had the worst jobs report in the last four years. Isn't that what you do when you're confused about your gender? People complain to me every week that they're draining their life savings. They can't afford a house. They cannot change their jobs. They can't get a job, etc. It's this attitude of telling all these people who are living paycheck to paycheck, who are on food stamps, and telling them, oh, Thank you just know. work harder to get a job, even though we just had the worst jobs report in the last four years. It's this attitude that doesn't resonate with people. It's pretty out of touch and doesn't really acknowledge the problems that most people face. This type of attitude doesn't resonate with most people because you're denying people their reality. This yeah. type of mindset actually comes from a highly privileged position. If you start- It does. Who else is going to lay around all day and then start coming up with all these weird new social anxieties to start putting yourself- It's like Pokemon badges. You guys, I'm pretty sure most of you here are familiar with Pokemon. It's been around for a long damn time. It's like, you know, when you win a, a gym, a gym battle, and then you get like the badge, that's how they wear this stuff. I've got social anxiety and I, I've i also got like, I don't know, some, other, you know, I, I'm not a full ableist or whatever. I don't know what the, the and whatever stupid, crazy terms you want to come up with, man. They just want to wear them like badges. And then they talk amongst each other like, oh, yeah, well, look at how many medals I've got. You know, I've got more social anxiety and mental orders than you do. So therefore, you know, I <laughs> it's like even though I'm I'm lower on the totem pole, so to speak, but now I'm also higher. I, I've got more authority than you because, uh, you know, more people make fun of me. Shut up. That's what you care about? This is what you lay around thinking about all day? Thinking about other people than yourself. And you know that show, The Biggest Loser? That's exactly what this, that's, that's exactly what describes Democrats. Who's the biggest loser? Except for instead of losing weight, they talk about, you know, how worthless they are. That's all it is. I'm stuck in a wheelchair and I've got anxiety. And, uh, you know, the other day, two clumps of my hair fell out. I sprained my knee by going upstairs the other day. My hair is pink and some guy looked at me. I'm pretty sure it's because he was a racist. You're just plain who's the biggest loser. It's stupid. Understand that some Nobody's people have to provide to for their children, their spouses, their family, their mom. And they can't put food on the table. They can't pay their bills. They can't put a roof over their head. It doesn't really matter if the Democratic Party is telling them to prioritize kindness or inclusivity or being anti-racist. Yeah, but they don't seem what to be very kind. What matters foremost is being able to live. It's a complete and total privilege and first world problem to say, oh, let's focus on being inclusive. What pronoun are you instead of putting food on the table and surviving? 
Like, do you really think people in North Korea have time to care about if Kim Jong Un says some nice words that day? They're really just fighting for their survival at that point. People also feel very unsafe, which is the second level on the hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Not one time when her daughter was murdered and I was helping her navigate the criminal justice system did one Democrat call me to offer their assistance. It was only Republicans. And I am an independent. I both, I vote both ways. I'm so that is a phenomenally good point. When, when you do see the, the outstretch of people trying to offer services and stuff like that, or at least condolences or help, instead, the other side would simply deny it as if it doesn't exist. You know, don't talk about that. You're going to be a racist if you if you bring up these issues. It's like, no, bitch, this shit is actually happening. My, it's like, my gosh, you know, people actually care about these issues. Though, like, oh, you know, people are dying. It's insulting. You. No, please don't speak over me. Because, but as I was bending down to pick up my dog's mess, uh, one of the guys like grabs me by my hips, and huh? he had an erection. Oh god! And just starts like humping me. It was one of the most terrifying things ever. Because I've been harassed. Hold up, I want to read that at the top. I remember her. She's like from the Young Turks. Young Turks producer Anna Kasparazin says uh, she she left the Democrats after she was, uh, let's just say, poked or harassed by a homeless man in Los Angeles. Why on earth are you in Los Angeles? I've gone there for business school, and I'll tell you what, what a shit show. And it's And it's like 10 times worse now. Kasparin says she was shamed by liberals for stating that she felt fearful to leave her house after the incident. Maybe she said it was a white dude, then maybe they'd have been okay with it. I've been harassed and chased by multiple homeless people. The homeless near me literally set fires. A lot more people than you think are actually physically assaulted yeah, the city's in some voice. way or another, or they just have some weird public nuisances going on. Statistically and factually, crime is unfortunately up. So obviously the physical protection of the people was not being met and it is- Here's the thing too, is that crime will continue to go up as long as people are desperate. And when you have mass inflation, you've got higher crime. Why? Because if you can't afford it, you're just going to steal it. Or you're desperate enough that you're going to start jumping into other people's yards, taking stuff, busting windows. People will, they, get, they go mad. And so with, with this economy that they've created and how it's going further downhill, you better believe crime is going to keep going up. But now things might change. It's the second lowest level on the hierarchy of needs. And Trump said that he was going to do various things to help with the physical security, but Kamala did not say that she would do anything for that. So the simple <laughs> explanation was that people were voting to put food on the table, to put a roof over their head, for physical protection, and to be able to save up something for a retirement, maybe. The Democratic Party did not clarify or bring up any positions or policies that they had to help mitigate the everyday problems of people's lives, aka their basic fundamental need to live. It's yeah. almost tone deaf to have all these celebrities prance around stage, twerk, whatever, while 12% <laughs> of Americans are on food stamps and literally cannot afford to live. The truth is, I think America is willing to vote for actually anyone or anything or any person, no matter their race, gender, sexuality, etc., etc. As I would actually disagree with that point. Long as they could help satisfy people's basic and fundamental needs, you can actually probably. That is a big point if they're able to do that job. But I, I really do disagree with that point because, let's be honest. <laughs> You, you put a, a, a tranny in there to run for president, dude. I, I, I don't, even if they were making a couple of good points, I don't think people just, just off of principle alone, they're going to vote for that. They're just not, especially because you're going to be putting that on the world stage. No, nobody's going to be going for that. I just don't see that. At the end of the day, you have to, you have to be the part of that leader. Like you, it's. As weird as it sounds, you have to look the part as well as portray the part as well. Because it's like a psychological thing as well that when you have a leader, if I, if I say in your mind, imagine a powerful leader or a leader of one of the most powerful nations on earth and, and like just kind of create a, a figure in your head, you're probably thinking of someone that's maybe more broad, tall, strong looking. That's kind of like normally what people default to. But if you're going to default to somebody who's like, you know, wimpy, scared looking, 
you know, it's like has lack of jaw, lack of any form of ability. It's like you have to kind of look that part as well. So and it's understandably so because you want to be able to look at your leader going, yeah, that's my leader right there. Confirm that thesis from this election cycle. Trump has ridiculous language, a somewhat questionable criminal record, paid hush money to a star, probably not the best ethics, let's be real, but he says that he's going to help. Sa I think that's a bit exaggerated too. Like, I don't really agree on that. I understand that he says some controversial things, but that's also the trait that people see as, uh, as a leadership trait. That is somebody who's going to speak their mind, somebody who's going to push limits a bit. But this idea that he's just like some criminal dude running around. I mean, let's, let's be real here. It's more, it's more theatrics than it is like he, he's running around committing crimes. You know what I'm saying? The, if you want to know the real criminals, just go look at Congress. Satisfy your fundamental needs like the needs to have affordability of life and also physical protection. The Democratic Party refused to acknowledge the validity of these issues that everyday people faced. And that's what really broke them in the end. Obviously, it's a whole different story to see if Trump will actually be able to solve these fundamental issues that people are having. Only time will tell and we'll see moving forward. Next time, the Democrats need to take a stance on policy that really affects people's everyday life instead of telling them that their opponent is Hitler. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Right. Uh, one of the big things is um, making valid arguments. And, and actually addressing points in general. This is why I'm looking at it going, if they do manage to recover, it's going to take quite a bit. It's gonna have to, they're gonna have to gut a lot of the stuff that they have. But here's the thing, the way that they do this is they like to build Trojan horses. So let's say that they kind of pull back the party, they rebuild a little bit, they have a new Trojan horse, so to speak. Um, it looks good on the outside. Maybe they're talking about policies a little bit more than they are talking about genders and shit. Okay, fine. But you better believe there's still going to be something else inside that, that horse. They're going to slip it underneath the rug, so to speak. And so, but it, it's always going to rear its ugly head that way. It's not going to go away. That element is always going to be there. And that's why I look at that and I'm just like, well, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. You ain't harming anybody else but yourself. Hey, I ain't got a problem with it because I don't agree with most of the shit that they come up with anyways. But I also would have to say, as fun as it, say, if it sounds, and I never thought I'd really be saying this, I agree with what uh, Bernie Sanders was saying to a degree when he was saying um, the, one, the reason why they lost is they had nothing to stand on. No policies. They weren't talking about issues. It was all just fluff. No substance. And you got to be able to at least make valid arguments. If I'm talking about immigration in general and you're just going to call me um, a racist, that's not an argument. You actually have to sit down and lay out your argument as to why I'm wrong with my stance. If you cannot do that, People are going to notice. They're going to notice when, when you're going to start gaslighting them, talking shit, and that's all you've got. It's like, when, it, that's why people hate uh, political speech or political talk. You know, you get up on, on a damn podium. Today, I want to say that I absolutely love America and this country has done so much for me and there's many issues at hand and I'm going to be, you know, addressing these issues and we're going to start with... Uh, you know, racism in this country, which is getting very bad. And one of the ways that I'm going to do that is looking hard into this issue. It's like, dude, you've been jibber jabbering for how long now? You've, you've, you've been talking a lot, but you've said nothing at the end of the day. You've said nothing. And everyone's tired of that. At least Trump is, is like pushing things forward, telling you exactly what he wants to do. And like what his plans are. That's why I like, I, dude, I don't know how, how much they're actually going to recover, if ever, really. Because this was like a crushing defeat for them.